All right, and welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm Shane and... We're gonna I'm remember. Jason. Nice. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, so yes, some, thi- uh, <laughs> some things aren't forgotten. That's true. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess not. Uh, so yes, today we've got uh, episode number one of three of the podcast, the state of Vanu. Gosh, excuse me. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, progression of Vanu uh, in 2020, as I think there's been quite uh, quite a lot to talk about, and uh, the forecast for 2021. Uh, get some updates out, and uh, after I'll play the audio for uh, for my newest article uh, in I guess uh, LUA newsletter, LUA Publications newsletter that uh, uh, I will send out uh, on the subject. Uh, I really just want to catch up with Jason. It has been, as I kind of alluded to a moment ago, it's been a long time since we recorded. I kind of, I kind of just now, Jason. I, I wake up, I wake up at like four a.m. Wired, it was just wired, just, just you know, ready to go, ready, ready to, do, ready to do some stuff. So I'll, I'll like, if I'm recording a podcast or something now, it's at like four thirty a.m. So like, there's not really anyone awake at to record at that time. So like, it's just usually me pumping out stuff. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So. <laughs> And you're two hours behind, so that would be insane. That would be like uh, Freedom Fiends, uh, you know, morning radio sort of stuff. <laughs> that crazy. That's that's just just a little early, just a little early, <laughs> like five hours early. <laughs> right. Let me actually get you on screen. I don't, know why I don't have. No. I'm not sure why I don't why I don't have you on screen yet. Okay, there we go. All right, get it flipped over. So very good, very good. So um, how so how how are things going uh, out in California? I guess give us the uh, give us the update on on life out there during uh, during all this. Oh shit! I am in another lockdown. Um, oh yeah. Like we were like I well I I want to say another lockdown. we like we've always been in lockdown since like March. 15th or 13th or something like that but it's it's more severe now and like they they had businesses they had like some businesses open for like a month and a half and then now they're closed again and it's no bueno man like i'm working like one to two days a week Uh. my brother my brother works my brother works construction him and my dad, they uh, uh, work part of a construction business, and they have to get a COVID test like every two weeks. Gosh, <laughs> in order to just keep working, and it's it's insane, man. It's it's so bad out here. Like um, mm. like I, I I've I've gotten used to the quiet at least because like the city buses aren't running, so like the the buses aren't blowing their air brakes as they go past my place and. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> but other than that, man, it's like businesses are closing man. all over the place. Um, my local my local grocery store, Lucky's, they're uh they're closing as of New Year's or uh, as of Christmas Day, they're closing their doors. Um mm. but it's it's bad. It's really bad out here in terms of like like and, and it's the, the worst part is the worst part is there's there's so much fear. Mm. So much fear. Like I, I was at the, the big grocery store a couple of weeks ago. And um when this first hit, when this first hit back in March, like it hit like everything every business business was normal and then it hit, right? So like all the businesses they were, they had their stockpile, the warehouses were all full, people were still getting their deliveries. Now, after like nine months or eight months, whatever it is, um, the warehouses are like half empty. Right. So that means the stores are like half empty. So I went grocery shopping and like the shelves are like a third of the way empty. Like there's oh. nothing like behind behind the initial product. And then like the meat sections were all empty and, and the dairies were like half empty. And you like you can see literal fear in people's eyes behind wow. their masks. Yeah, wow. it was bad. It was bad going grocery shopping. No. See, and that's and 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 that's. I, I guess I need to keep that in mind a little bit. Um, and and it's you. You didn't really, really didn't even say anything about like, oh, everyone's sick here. It's just kind of like everything is bad. Like just the like it, it's no. It's, it's like yeah. So so like <laughs> I I kind of forget like here. Like yeah, everyone's wearing masks, but like and and there's you know like people are like oh yeah you know so and so got the flu. It was pretty bad for like three days. Yeah, they couldn't taste anything, but they're fine now. It's like okay, well, sounds like they just you know got Dude, the normal I'm... thing, the normal thing, and you know now they're now they're fine again. But now it's just it comes with the added like the the it seems like the yearly flu now just so called flu just comes with mm-hmm. like an extra fourteen day quarantine now just just because why why not right? 
Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually have. Okay, so I, I'm in I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm in what's technically called the East Bay, Contra Costa County. Like mm -hmm. I have like 1.1 million people in my county. Yeah. Mm. Thirty three thousand cases, only two hundred and ninety seven deaths. So three hundred deaths, less than three hundred deaths, and my entire county is like on red flag lockdown. More businesses have closed than people have died. Put, yeah. Just putting that out there. I'm not trying to be cold about it, but but the flu thing. You mentioned the flu thing. All right, so I got I got a story on that. This is this will tell you how bad it is. Okay, so my dad, um, he has like COPD and he has some other issues, so he gets an annual flu shot. Right, so he gets the flu. So he gets the flu shot like, like last Wednesday, and then go like last Wednesday morning, and then goes to work Wednesday and Thursday. And as as I said, he works with my brother. So Friday, my dad is sick and doesn't go to work. My brother, who I live with, gets sick on Saturday, doesn't go to work on Monday. The boss calls a okay, boss calls and goes, "Okay, I need I need two negative positive or negative COVID tests from you." before you're allowed to go back to work. So now my brother has missed an entire week of work waiting on the results from COVID tests. Like he mm -hmm. took a COVID test on Tuesday and he took one on Friday. And that's just to go back to work for like three days and then Christmas and then go back to work for three days and then New Year's. And it's just, yeah. And, like and, I, said, and dude, I guess there's so much, there's so much fear. I, I guess I will say, and, and, and again, I guess it's just even within, even within, you know, even with our, our neighboring country, Illinois, uh, here at Pasnia, um, I still kind of, I still, still kind of feel insulated a little bit because they're, they're like, even like an hour away, um, you know, it is a big, massive corporation, but like, if you, if you have, if you're sick or you just want to take two weeks off work and get paid for it, you just say that you have any of the symptoms of COVID and then it's automatically give you two weeks off. There's not really a test. They just do that as a precaution. So, um, I guess there is kind of that, like there is that just kind of, um, that generalized kind of, I guess, fear about it, um, or maybe it's just protocols and standards. You know, like, I guess the the what do they call? You know, whatever, whatever they are, just their standard operating procedures for, for. So I guess nothing standard now at this point. But I don't know. Kind of a uh, kind of rambling, but. <laughs> that that quote, new normal bullshit. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that new normal. I hate that. I'm so sick of that term. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I can't. Like, gosh, like, I, I, I need, I, I didn't really think about this yet until just now. But yeah, I am very, very insulated. Like, I don't like it's, it's, it's nice. It's very, very nice. I will say. So I, I deleted. Um, I just, I've been just getting myself off, off. Um, the, uh, I guess the, the communist, fascist, censorship happy, uh, platforms. Um, I just, so I, I, I quit. I, I deleted fascist book. It was like three weeks ago, I think. Instagram, I did like maybe four, five days ago or something like that. Um, and like. So my, my time, like, with technology and online has, like, decreased significantly. And, like, I'm spending time, obviously, with my animals. And um, I'm preparing for uh, what's to come this, this spring. You know, come back, I guess, not even come this spring. Like, within a month, um, there's a lot that's that's going to be happening. Um, and, uh, like, the stress level is so much lower. Like, not ha like really not even, mm -hmm. not even like, interfacing with the nonsense at all. Like, obviously, like, if I'm, if I'm still on Twitter, so I'll see some stuff that comes up there. If something massive happens, like, I'm going to see it. Like, I'm not, I'm just, like, I'm not, like, avoiding it 100%. But, like, just, like, removing myself from that, that influence a lot is, is is really really significant so um i would uh highly highly recommend that um for for people even if, even just take a take a little break um take from from uh, you know technology it's a very very uh refreshing thing not even from it's uh, i think i think what one of the one of the big issues is and and i i saw a comment about this on jason bassler's uh twitter jason bassler runs uh oh yeah, yeah. the free thought project um, and he said something about um, turning off notifications, right? He said that was that was one of the biggest things that he learned about um, dealing with social media is turning off notifications. And I, I got to go a step further than that. Like one of the biggest things that I had to learn about social media is I took I took social media too seriously, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, it's just it's it's not it's not as serious as people make it. And if, and once you realize that, and you realize that, like ninety nine point nine 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 etc percent of the people on social media are are hyperballing right? right and they're hiding behind their their cyber their cyber balls the keyboard warrior stuff and once you once you realize that most of them aren't even really counts like, yeah <laughs> it's 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 not it's not 
anything. It's it's really not anything. That's that's what it comes down to. It's right. Just, and, and see, that's that's why it's, like it's ninety percent garbage. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like I'm still on float. Like I go on float quite often. I'm still on bit shoot and LBRY. But you go to those platforms, and like that's where, like, um, um, you know, like I'll, I'll say, you know, that's where you know, like the the people that I want to listen to are right. Like they're on those platforms because they got yeah. censored off the other ones. Um, so like it's 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 obviously <laughs> a lot less. It's obviously a lot less stressful. Um, and 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 I mean, and, and some people might disagree with this, but like I I've kind of had the the theme at least for the past. Or I guess kind of the motto for the past eight or nine months. So like I'm done willingly subjecting myself to propaganda. Like why would I do that anymore? Like I uh-huh. know this. I know the state's evil. Like like why like why do why do I need to like consume more and more like like you know anecdotal examples about it, right? Like I know like like what I'll, I'll I'll focus on building you know the second you know building the second realm, right? Um, so that's that's kind of where kind of where I'm at, and and I guess I'll, I'm curious. Um, you you kind of gave us an update on on what's happening in California, but um, <clears throat> I guess um. Have you also seen, uh, you know, I guess, yeah, yeah you, you have more kind of a wider wider look into into the network now. I guess, uh, have you see, also seen positive developments uh, despite the insanity? Uh, actually, I have. The, the black market here in California for certain things has flourished. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll leave that one on that because, you know, OPSEC per sec. But, like, um, neighbors helping neighbors. That was that's one of the things I've noticed a lot too. Like like I, I live in a small apartment complex and the kids still run around. The kids are still in the in the parking lot having fun and, and riding their little bikes and, and and yelling and screaming and playing soccer. And the parents are still hanging out on the porches. Right. And they're still talking to each other. I don't see masks at all. Like in my little apartment complex. I don't see people wearing them. People are talking, hanging out, shaking hands, giving hugs, kids are playing. But like you go to the the grocery store, like that's I guess that's technically a public area. You go to the grocery store and and it's you see that the like with the mask comes the fear, I th- I think is what it is because the mask has become the propaganda thing, right? It's like um uh, like seeing a uh, uh, open carry open carry firearm, right? You see someone carrying a firearm, and if you're not initiated into firearms, you don't understand firearms. Then you 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 see that firearm and you get and you get a fear, right? They're like, oh my god, they're dangerous, blah 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 blah. It's the same thing with with the masks these days, right? You you see the masks, or or you go into an area that requires a mask and you put that mask on, and with that mask comes the fear, and it's like it's like a um it, like it clouds your judgment, it clouds reality, and right. and it becomes its own becomes its own stigmata. Right, and and you know what you know what it does, and I I so I, I heard this before, um, it's probably a few months ago, but um, the masks are, are, are like because people aren't people aren't seeing people die, right? Like it's not that it's not as bad. Really, people are you know dying on the streets. So like there there has to be a reminder of what's happening. You know that fear. So it's like that is the that is the traumatic part. Like that is what's supposed to keep people in perpetual trauma. And I've been looking into obviously like with my with my diabetes, like it could have been a hundred percent caused by one emotional incident. If my body would got stuck. And is it parasympathetic mode? Um, uh, parasympathetic mode where um, it's in stress, you know, all the time, and there's no, and it never goes into uh-huh. repair mode. That alone, just one stressful scenario. So if you think about like yeah. um, that, like that perpetual trauma of the, you know, like people, like the people who are, you know, really, you know, really into this, like really, really, you know, into the fear and the propaganda, like that is a constant constant element of trauma and that like that alone and like one emotional thing can can spark a can be the first step in a, to this to chronic diseases or something else so um you know and that's that's it's it's just just an observation really yeah um the the, the stress especially from like um whenever I, I i talk to people about like the their kids especially when it comes to the kids the amount of stress from like the uh um, the digital schooling, right? Not being able to hang out with their friends and, and have that interaction. Suicides here are so are incredibly up. It, they're, they're, I think they, they said the other day that they were up like like 300 and something percent, like 300, like 317 or something like that percent, which is an astronomical number if you really think about it for an area that's at like a million people in this county and suicides are up 300%. Right. Well, what's changed in the last year to cause that? Well, it's all the COVID. It's kids staying home, jobs it's, being yeah. lost, dreams being killed, hopes mm-hmm. being killed. Like all these, yeah. these, these high school kids, right? Senior year, right? Um, high school sports going off to college. No, that's all dead now. 
those those dreams are killed. Like you'll you'll never get your senior year back, right? You'll never mm-hmm. go to prom again. Yeah. You'll never be able to play your senior year. You'll never have a homecoming dance. You'll never have a chance for those college recruiters to come and see you. You know the etc. Right? You'll never walk down the aisle for for your graduation, and that that has a huge mental effect, right? There's 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 the absence of the normalcy bias. And that that causes the chaos in people's minds and, and, and the stress that leads to these suicides and, and leads to all this fear. Um, I think that's that's what it is, is they're, they're creating a new normal in which everybody is stressed and everybody is yeah. everybody is, is is falling under this facade and, and scared people are easier to control. Yes, yes, and and it, and it sounds it's, it sounds bad, but the the point the point is, and and, and like it, the the point is like there's really like the another big lesson of 2020 is like most of the stuff that I worried about and got stressed about like 99.9 percent of it wasn't worth like stressing about. So like, <clears throat> just you know, just yeah, I don't know. Like it, it sounds easier than it. It, it sounds you know it sounds cliche, right? It sounds just don't stress about shit. Like it's not worth it. Um, like seriously, smoke some weed. Like I don't know what whatever. It, Whatever it takes for you to cope with this <laughs> with this fake reality that we have in front of us, um, seriously, but not like, but also kind of, also kind of sarcastically too. But um, I mean, go go out and go out in nature, whatever whatever it takes. But like, I, I mean, um, this just just understand that and what what's what you're seeing is not real. What's really when you go out in nature, like that's that's reality, like that that's reality. But the, the survival society is just a, it's a it's a big deception. Um, yeah. Here's 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 the here's the here's a big piece of deception for you. Okay. All right. This is this is not breaking news or anything like that, but the the federal government is so worried about what's going on that they're deregulating shower heads and deregulating cherry pies. The the FDA passed a statute that removes the limitations on the number of cherries in a cherry pie. And the amount of water that can pump through a shower head in a given hour. Oh, thank the overlords for that. That's 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 what your federal government is worried about right now. Gosh. That's <laughs> I mean that's a joke. That right? That's <laughs> there is no clothes on the emperor, <laughs> and it, it's only gonna get it's only gonna get worse too. It's only gonna get like or, and like or not. It's only gonna get more absurd. I'll put it that. That's what I mean. It's only gonna get. It's only gonna become oh, more absolutely. and more absurd. It can't. It can't go the other way now. Like it's gone too far. Um, if if it were to, if it were to start going in the opposite direction, there might actually have to be responsibility for things. And and you know the age that we're in, it's not the age of personal responsibility. That's for damn sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're probably not gonna see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is no, there is very, very little personal responsibility. So, um, I mean, I mean, you, yeah. you, we, we know that by the mask requirements, because the mask. I wear my mask to save you. Oh, okay, nice, thank you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> like, <sighs> fucking people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, have you, have you seen any, any other, or I guess, have you ever, have you noticed any other, any other positives? I guess, uh, um, it's, I, I, I know for sure there are others, others like me. I know, I, cer- I know I certainly wasn't the first, but, um, I know there are certainly others like me that are, that are making their exit off of the centralized platforms now, or I guess not that maybe there's the censorship happy platforms, um, the fascist ones. Um, I guess, uh, is there anything uh-huh. else that, uh, that you've seen, I guess, any positive trends in regards to Vanu, um, over the course of the, uh, the past 12 months? In regards to Vanu, um, I, I, I have I have a few friends that have entered the van, the mobile van living. Um, mm, okay, but other than, other than that, like I, I see a lot of people buying firearms, but I mean these these are a lot of first time buyers and and they're really they're still part of the servile society. They're not they're not checking out uh, the rise in three D printed firearms. Mm-hmm. That's that's going up. That's really nice to see. Uh, the innovation in those, um, uh, the Dagny Dagger from Atlas Arms, um, homemade, homemade ammunition. We'll call it that. That is capable of piercing a three uh, A body armor, I think, or three plus three. Yeah, three or three plus body armor. It's one or the other. So that's kind of nice. But um, make sure to send me that link. I'll put. I'll drop that in the show notes. 
Yeah, uh, and and uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin went up, and then the I have a, a few people reach out asking about cryptocurrencies, and um, I have I have a friend in in Wyoming. We've talked about them before, and she actually liquidated like I think it's like like fifteen percent of her four hundred one k and flipped it over into crypto because of the government's reaction to to covid and all this yes, other stuff. Yes, that, so. see that's see that's not anything I like I I'm not in like I thankfully like I I kind of when I when I got into like anarchism I was kind of like it was kind of sad and, like it was kind of frustrating at times cuz like I couldn't do anything that would violate my principles cuz I just didn't want to do that. Um so like it just like left uh-huh. me like cuz I so, like, I kind of like re- regretted it but this at like now I have no ties to this like I have like one or two small ties to the Survival Society and that's it. So like I don't have like a four a big 401k with a company but one positive I'm not going to say who this is for for privacy reasons but you you mentioned the 401k like yeah the the government like the reaction to this they're they're letting people I guess withdraw their 401ks like without the penalty. Um so they can actually get their money. Um like you know like so they can they, they can get their money and you like and do whatever they want with it. So that's that that is a really big positive. Um, yeah, um, a really big positive. Because uh, I, I I know that, like for that, that that initial crash, like I know like I know there were people that lost six, you know six figures, like a lot of money with that initial crash. So being able to, you know, save put that in a safe uh-huh. haven or something increasingly, even like Bitcoin. Um, yeah, huge, pretty huge. Yeah, uh, when the uh, the stimulus checks went out back in like May or June or whatever it was, the twelve hundred dollar checks. Like Coinbase, Coin I think it was Coinbase and one other one that had a, like a um, uh, like a like a four or five hundred percent increase in purchases, and and Bitcoin purchases, and the vast majority of those were for twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so, you know, and now Bitcoin's like what twenty three thousand. Yeah. Or something like that right now. Oh, that's a that's a good ROI. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh. For sure. That, that I guess that that is that that is uh, one positive. Uh, so there there will be at least a segment of the population um, who had the foresight, uh, which the, there always are, right? It's just how how big it the, how big of a fraction of people is it um, that had the foresight mm-hmm. to, to secure their their investments or make preparations ahead of time. Um, I guess we'll we'll kind of we'll we'll, we'll kind of have to see. Uh, and it's 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 hard to get. It's impossible <laughs> to get. It's impossible to get any numbers nowadays, right? Because how are you going to go personally verify all the pieces of information? So um, it's 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 kind of irrelevant to even try to try to try to figure it out. But um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I, I guess what one of the one of the really big positives um, that that I've seen is uh, there's there's been a, a big drive towards food self sufficiency. Um, and that's mm-hmm. been, that's been like my, my, oh. my biggest piece of education this year and, um, is, is yeah, food self-sufficiency, but what were, were you going to jump in there? Yeah. I follow, I, I follow, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a prepper. I follow a lot of prepping groups and, and pages on Facebook mm-hmm. and, um, uh, earlier this year, the hatcheries, like the, the, the duck and chicken hatcheries, they sent out, you know, people buy them online. Like they ran out. Like they had, they had so many people buying that they were like, that they were um, um, like pre-selling, uh, pre-selling chicks and 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 ducklings. Like they're they're like you couldn't buy them anywhere. You had to you had to get on a list. Um, that's because people were like they flipped out and they were like, oh god, okay, well you know, food self sufficiency. We got to yeah. get ducks and chickens. I need food that produces food. Like that, that, that was my thought last year too. I was like, <laughs> I need food that produces food. Like, like that's, that's the smartest thing to do right now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like that was that was the big rush. It was like yeah. ducklings, chickens, and toilet paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of those was a smart Which, thing. Okay. Like, but, um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, that that's 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 what I'm gonna be doing, and and basically thirty days, probably three weeks, I'll be ordering. Um, yeah, ordering fertilized. Uh, there's a, a couple, a couple different, uh, I guess, breeds that I'm gonna get for chickens and ducks. So I'm gonna be ordering probably um, a couple, a couple dozen each. So I'll, I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll be trying to, I'll be incubating 48 birds um, come, yeah, end of January, and uh, then hopefully by the beginning of March I can get them outside. And they're, they're a hardy variety, um, so like they're suited for cold conditions. Uh, so which, that's uh, the purpose. Which- Oh, the breed. What breed? Oh gosh, it's an it's it's uh-huh. uh it's in my uh it's in my notepad in there. I don't have it on me. Um, oh. I can I, I can I can put them in I can put them in the show notes or it's in, it's in, it's in tea afterwards. But yeah, there's a couple different breeds, um, 
Yeah, and I'm looking into and the duck eggs, man. Like uh, I, I don't know. Like I, I really, really want duck eggs. I, I almost had at, at about the time I, I had four ducks last year, and about the time I was supposed to figure out if any of them are gonna be any of them were female, and gonna be laying or, uh, laying laying eggs. Um, they got uh-huh. killed by something. So I, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, it, it same thing, same same thing with the chickens. About a month before, is like they were. It was like a month before, and I was gonna have a dozen eggs a day. Yeah, they they. I, I think something got in there, and they found out that they could go over the centerpiece, and they ended up going off into the woods, and it probably didn't take long for them to get just destroyed. Um, ah, by yeah. Something. So, yeah, I've got a better plan this year. I've got a better plan this year, and it, over, it overlaps my the uh, the permaculture forest, the the food food jungle I'm gonna make out here. So, um, yeah. I saw I saw that in your notes. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear a little about, bit about uh, that food forest? absolutely okay. you know i love that stuff okay so um so i listened to there's a, there's a podcast i listen to um crochable seven radio there's an episode number 276 it's uh, an episode on permaculture and my and i've said this multiple times on podcasts so you listen your regular listeners will, will have remembered my comments saying like you know like a permaculture farm would be nice but i like i don't want to have to you know go i don't have to learn all the stuff for that like i don't want to have to you know you know, read all the books on it and all that. Well, I was ever complicating things. Uh, in this episode, this guy was basically like, if you've got a green area, like you, even if you have like a city backyard, if you have green grass, like you, you as long as you like you, uh, depending upon how you like you work with nature, as long, as long as you work with nature, you can pretty much do whatever you want to. Like there's people who are growing things and, um, you know, climates that they shouldn't be able to grow those in. Um, and it's just because mm-hmm. if you, if you build up the soil in the right way, basically the, the, the idea for out here is all of chickens and ducks. Um, I'll have a basically kind of a dog kennel, um, like a dog kennel thing that's where they'll sleep at night. And then during the day, like I'll have, um, I'll have a cage in there just cause I got to protect them from predators. I'm not losing them again. Um, so I'll have them, I'll have them fenced yeah. in up top, but they'll be able to forage all in this grass area up here and they'll be able to walk around. They'll get put up at night, um, for safety. So like they'll be fertilizing this entire area. Um, and so, um, I guess like one of the, one of the tactics, and this is kind of the, just to give you an idea of, of, of what this guy was talking about. Um, if you dig up, like some, if you dig up some grass and you put like saw, like, I guess not sawdust, but like wood chips and, and leaves and, you know, um, those sorts of materials. And then you put dirt back on top of it. You're kind of creating like a jungle, like a jungle floor underneath there. And then you can plant plants, you know, plants directly yeah. into that. And, and mm-hmm. So yeah, ba- na- it's basically natural it's, composting. Yep, it's it's stuff like that and um, making it where where the nature does the work for you. So like I've got gutters around here, and I'd already thought like whenever I get my new place in here, like the gutters are obviously going to be rainwater collection systems because why not? It's stupid for them not to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I I've already got like I've already been thinking there's a gutter right out here. I'll just put a tank under there and then basically just carve the water throughout the the, the you know the grass in a way um, to to you know water whatever I need to out there. But the the it's the the, the I guess the garden part of it's going to be rather small this year, just because um, it is just grass and it needs you know a year or so of bird bird fertilization. But I'll have I'll have a row on front. Um, I plan on growing some heirloom squash, um, some various types of squashes and some onions and things. Um, so yeah, I'll be starting that this year. And there's some some garlic out here. Um, stag a a a, a, a I guess a, yeah, fellow Pasnian out from out to, out east sent uh mailed us uh, some some garlic cloves for us to for us to plant here so that was a really really cool thing thanks stag thanks stag appreciate that and uh yeah lots lots happening here so yeah the the i wasn't really expecting to to really do the permaculture farm but um i guess start why not start right out here why not start right out here no reason not to yeah i'll i'll send you a link to something um about vertical gardening mm-hmm. you can do vertical gardening um and use it, vertical gardening uses way less water than than regular gardening because you don't have the um, the absorption into the ground. You don't have the ground loss. But I'll have to send you a couple links to that one. Yeah, but uh, it's a good start. It's a good start. I mean, soil take like if you have. Um, I, I know where you are. You have you have decent soil, but you know they they grow all the way. They grow all around you, right? Mm-hmm. So I know you have decent soil. But uh, I mean, even decent soil can take a while to to actually build up to be oh, yeah. fully productive. Right. And it, it's something it's something that has to be a work. I think that's that's where a lot of people get into get in over their head or or they they get frustrated is is they they they'll plant something and then they'll leave the soil alone and then try to plant the same thing again. Well, if if you plant something that's like heavy nutrient dependent mm-hmm. or heavy heavy uh, mm-hmm. like nitrogen dependent, well, you deplete He's the soil of the nitrogen by the nitrogen that back thing. in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, you have to put the nitrogen back in there. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't replenish on its well, I mean it does replenish on its own, but it takes time for it to replenish on its own. So I mean, even doing something like um um like getting worms. Like if, if you if you if you were to get worms and, and you create your own compost piles or or uh, you could use like worm casings um to, to supplement the, the chicken droppings and things like that. Um just to aerate that soil and loosen it up and allow the nutrients to get in there. And it's, it's really simple things like that, that you can do that can create like really healthy soil really fast and healthy soil produces better product. Right. Well, and, and that's I don't know why and, people don't do it. Right. And, and plus, and, and while, while I'm building it up, uh, while I'm building up the soil, yeah, a year or two, it's just going to be bird fertilization. And that's like, there's nothing better than that. Um, so well, yeah, got, they're going to be, they're going to be tearing right? up, they're going to be tearing up the front yard. No, the goats are out there on their own. They're, they're on their own. They don't come in here. Um, they stay, they stay, oh. they stay locked up. And unfortunately they don't get out because <laughs> oh. yeah, the, uh, uh, <laughs> Willie, Willie found, Willie found a way. It was right before I, right before, or I guess right near the end of when, when the, when the grass was out anyway. So it was good timing, but Willie had just, Willie too had just started to started to get out of the electric fence. So we're gonna have to fix that next year. Um, <laughs> we'll have to fix that. And I guess the, the other, the other kind of, the other, the other food self-sufficiency, you know, 2020, 21, that's, that's our focus here at Pasnia is, um, I was thinking about doing, and I, I still want to, it'd be awesome, but it's, I'm thinking about ease here, like how, how easy it's been. Um, like raising lambs, um, it all uh -huh. takes is an electric fence and like, they're just, they're just such passive animals. They're easy to take care of. And like, <laughs> And processing a lamb, like I, I had never done it before, but like I processed two entire lambs by my, like I, I processed two entire lambs. So like it's, it was a lot easier than I expected. So like, if that's, if, if that's like, why would I, I, I don't know. And lamb's delicious too. So like, why the hell not? Um, so I might, I might just go for, go for two, two whole fields of lamb. Um, and you know, maybe hopefully find someone to trade with uh, at some point. Uh, for some pasture pig yeah. or something, but that's that's the only other the only gonna, other real update here. But yeah, what's up? You gonna run? Uh, you gonna run meat birds this year? Meat birds for sure. So yeah, the the, the plan with the birds. Um, I, I'll I'll yeah, I'll sell start with forty eight. Um, a dozen ducks. So hopefully I'll have uh, half half of each half meat birds, half layers. Um. Although it'll be mm -hmm. kind of be up to nature, right? I can't really decide that. Um, and uh, for the for the chickens, kind of the same thing. It'd be nice to have half. And I already I already decided that. Yeah, if they're if if they're born, you know, February one by yeah November, um, come fall, we'll be we'll be processing another lamb, and we'll be pro processing like a dozen chickens as well. Um, there'll be some well, young you young, can... young chickens, young organs. I'm really really excited for it. Have young chicken liver. Mm. Well, you can you can buy birds that are that are bred specifically for meat, and they they True. they grow from like chick to full size in like eight weeks. So yeah. you put you put those in a, in a chicken tractor, and you just you keep them out there where they're at, and then every day you move the chicken tractor mm -hmm. forward, and um, uh, that's what they do. They they scratch and they fertilize, scratch and fertilize, yep. scratch and fertilize for, for you for eight weeks, yep. and then you get to eat them. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I definitely, definitely plan on, on definitely plan on some meat birds. Yep. Yep. And it's, it'll, it, there's, yeah, it'll, it'll be good. I mean, once, once, once you have uh, a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of chicken, a bunch of duck. Oh, I forgot about the quail too. Um, mm -hmm. my, I got a quail guy. My lamb guy is also a quail guy. My, my quail guy. He's with, he's like five, <laughs> he's five minutes away. So at like the best part, I just, I shoot him a text, you know, say, Hey, can I get a couple of lambs? He brings him over and his side by side drops him off. And then I just take the hash over to him. Like it's, it's a slick deal. Um, and yeah, he's, he's got That's quail too. Fantastic. So, um, I, I will get, I will get started oh. back on the, back on the quail. And as far as you, you're talking about, about money-making opportunities, like, um, yeah, the bird eggs, um, for sure. Um, those, I could, uh -huh. I could certainly sell those and I, I could also sell ch like chicks. Um, I'll be incubating like, but yeah, I, I, I could probably, you know, um, do, you know, sell chicks for that too. But there's so, there's oh. so many opportunities for, um, you know, for, I guess, self-sufficiency on a homestead. Like there's so many ways. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can sell organic, uh, organic chicken eggs for like five dollars a dozen. Yep. Uh, that's that's. Like, uh, think that's, about duck that's eggs. A pretty good duck turnover. Eggs. Big duck a pretty eggs. Pretty good turnover. On big duck egg, duck eggs mm -hmm. are, are a delicacy in a lot of places. Um, yep. As well as duck. Right, and and all you have to the do, and it's itself. it's crazy. All you have to do is go on eBay 
and you type in fertilized duck, whatever type duck eggs you want. You put in, put those in. You pay like uh-huh. thirty bucks. They get shipped to your house. You toss them in an incubator, um, and you you have to you have to kind of flip them over um, a couple times a day. It takes you know a couple minutes. And by you know I I I did it I did it for quail last year, and I had a fifty percent hatch rate. Like I didn't I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like I had no idea. Um, I had no I have had no idea how to do any of this. And it's just kind of worked out. So um, I would uh, I've I've heard a lot of people say, and that's the same thing I would have, same thing I would have said a couple of years ago that you know like <clears throat> I would I couldn't I couldn't do it. There's no way I could do it. I mean, probably you could. You probably can. You probably can. You're probably overthinking things. Especially if you're listening to this podcast. You definitely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to look into it. I'm gonna have to look and see if there's a place online that you can buy fertilized duck and chicken eggs with bitcoin it's it's there's got to be someone out there right well hey uh, hey next year hey by 2021 2022 i'll be selling like i'm i'm, I'm gonna be selling meat and eggs on the elliot publications website we're gonna we're, we're gonna sell books you know privacy tools and you know good free range <laughs> eggs and black market meats wait for it it'll happen <laughs> be fantastic you can easily ship meat now, man. I get, I get, I, um, I get uh, some like a lot of the organs and stuff that I like to eat. It's hard to get, like the bone marrow that I like. Um, it's hard to get, uh-huh. so like, I have to order it from places. And yeah, it comes in an ice. It's no problem. Like it's just, it's just a com. It's commonplace now. So like, I can ship meats. I can ship, ship eggs. You know, whatever it takes, I can do it. I can do it. Got you. Got it. You got to supply. You got. You got to supply what people want, right? Oh, oh, oh! I you found one. I found one. What you got? Uh, Phoenix organic Phoenix organic feed. They sell chickens. Um, looks at chickens. They sell ch- turkeys, ducks, geese, game birds, hatchling eggs, and they do accept Bitcoin. Oh, send a link for that. Pop that open. Yep. They might get an order tonight. <laughs> uh. Who knows? If I if I find Let's cool see. places like that, I'll I'll support them. I just found uh I the place I I pretty much uh yeah I found I found a cool little website to purchase uh heirloom heirloom squash seeds from. The only reason I purchased those I oh Phoenix Organic Feed okay I like that I'll take a look. Yeah. And they do ship okay. Three bird minimum to ship two dollars cool. each okay wow. That's a that's a good deal. Turkeys yeah, yeah. too. Turkeys, I I could do turkeys. Turkeys would be good. Why not get a dozen damn Organic turkeys? Tur- uh, get a dozen damn turkeys and then like come November first harvest. That'll be that's some nice money right there. Yep, the cold weather chickens. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have the same breed I was looking for. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bet that's a fucking gold mine, man. Ooh, two dollars each. That's what I'd pay anyway. Well, actually, no. Like, God, and they're 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 chicks too. Like, if I could just skip the incubation step. Uh huh. But I've got the incubator. Once once I have the birds, I can do. I can just start incubating. It's all good. So I can start with chicks. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only site I can find that does that. Oh, it takes you somewhere else though. Cackle Hatchery. I guess I can put this on screen since. I do have I do have it on OBS and we're just right, let's see here what we got. <laughs> Does this site accept Bitcoin though? I doubt it. No. Okay, so that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so this site accepts Bitcoin, but they take you to it they take you to the Cackle website which doesn't accept Bitcoin. So it's What? It's deceptive. <laughs> ah! Hold on, Brown Eagle. Hold on, let's see. Oh, yep, yeah, it takes same same site. Oh, that's deceptive. Oh well. <laughs> let's see. Hmm. I don't know. That's weird. If you click on the Bitcoin, it goes to. It it stays on their site, but it's. Put in an order number. Yeah, weird. Might not be legit. <laughs> I don't know. Oh well. Anyway, uh, there's 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 plenty of right. options. Plenty, of, yeah, plenty, of, plenty of options. Um, yeah, it'd be cool if, if yeah, if I can find one that accepts Bitcoin. Like I said, next uh, year, next year, be, like, next year it'll be. Next year it'll be me. 
Might have to use a proxy merchant. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Okay. Um, let me see if there was uh, if was anything else of note. Um, talking about food sales efficiency twenty twenty one. Um, <laughs> not really. I mean, I, I'm gonna patch that little pond out there and toss fish in there, but that won't be that won't come to fruition for for some time, which is fine. Um, but the other the other option that presents, and this is in my uh, and the newsletter that'll play at the end, but uh, the newsletter and article. Um, that'll play at the end, but um, yeah, it could also serve as the uh, the off grid water too, because it's uh, real. It's it's really close to the house. Run a just put a pump in there, run a pipe. It would take nothing at all. Um, yeah, run, it, run it through if, a filter. And if you don't need a water heater, because I take cold showers, then you don't you don't need, don't don't have to worry about that part. <laughs> Done. Uh, yeah, I'll pass. I'll pass on the cold shower. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> my yeah. my bones don't like cold showers. <laughs> that's fair enough. That's fair enough. But uh, yeah, I guess that, that's the only the only uh, the only real real other thing. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, outside of outside of Pasnia, yeah, yeah, focus on food cell sufficiency. Yes, I, I think just to, um, there's there's there there are some additional folks. It, it shook some it, t- it sh- shook some additional folks awake, but obviously it didn't do a whole mm-hmm. lot. Um, <laughs> didn't do a whole lot, but that that's okay. It's okay because we're building up Pasnia, Pasnia, and there's uh, there's other other uh, freedom cells and uh, other nodes uh, in this overarching second realm network we've talked about so many times before. I guess that I've talked about so many times before. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of good stuff happening. I guess uh, really the only other thing I was gonna I was gonna mention and talk about is uh, the Pasnia Telegram channels because uh, they're they're pretty lively, um, pretty lively yeah, as uh, as of the jumping. past few days. So mm-hmm. I'd uh, recommend people hop in there. Um, there's the uh, Committee of Correspondence, which is just our general chat channel. Uh, there's our Pasnia Free pre- free Press, which is uh, news and updates. And uh, the newest channel, which uh, hasn't ha- actually had any activity yet, um, was at the uh, the request of Phoenix there in our Committee of Correspondence uh, chat. But uh, Pasnia Builders, uh, self-liberational media. So basically a place for people to drop links to whatever they want to, things for people to discuss, uh, more of their own self-liberational media. So... Um, lots of uh, good stuff so, there. You can yeah, I just go to pasnia dot com. All the inf- all that information is there. So, uh, Jason, is there uh, anything else you wanted to uh, to to talk about or, or mention here, uh, on the on the topic of uh, the state of Vanu as we go into twenty twenty one? Not really. Uh, hopefully, people learn. That's that's my big thing. Is is I I had I had this this teacher way back in fifth grade, Mister Nielsen. He said, uh, "A day is only a failure if you fail to learn something new." Yep. So hopefully, hopefully people learn from this, from from this experience, from from seeing the federal government add three point or it's like three point one trillion dollars to the national debt in one fiscal year. Oh, and they're about to add another one point nine. Oh, in one year. In one year. Yeah. The, this this new spending bill. It's going to be like a trillion dollars. Plus, they just did the NDAA, and then taxes are down. <laughs> it's just—they <sighs> have a New York assembly member, assemblyman, begging Goldman Sachs not to leave New York because it would take the the tax dollars with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's 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 exactly what you think it is, but. Hope, I just I just want people to to realize like the government can't help you, the government won't save you. The police look at the last like seven months. We've had the pandemic, quote unquote pandemic, plus all the protest. <laughs> the police won't protect you. The government won't help you. It's up to you. Realize that. Realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And but oh, so. um, uh, Vanu and Liberty Attack, Liberty Under Attack, is still on Facebook, even though Shane left. Um, I'm plugged into both both of the uh, the oh, pages. I, I forgot about the Vanu and page. As Shane, oh, glad. And as, oh, as oh, Shane that could have been post, bad. <laughs> as Shane post, yeah, as Shane post on in the Telegram chat, I'll just I'll copy and paste and throw them up on LUA. So there is still stuff going up on the Facebook page. Right on. Thank no. you, man. I, I appreciate that. And I did seriously forget about the Vanu page because the LUA Publications one just had so many more followers, so many more likes. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, I appreciate appreciate you staying on there. You know, staying in deep in deep in enemy territory. 
<laughs> sharing the propaganda. I'm already in California, man. I'm, that's that I'm is already, true. I'm so, in California. That's, I mean, I guess that is that is a step. I guess a step <laughs> step into the digital realm is a step in the positive direction, right? Um, yeah, well, I guess. <laughs> oh. I'm the friendly saboteur. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, definitely find us. I've been uh, um, as of the past uh, few days, I've been re-releasing, um, listening to, and re-re uh, and uh, re uh, re-releasing uh, video uh, all the uh, episodes of TVP out on um, LBRY and BitChute just to get them on another place. Um, so if you uh, want to check out uh, those videos over there, follow us on uh, LBRY. Uh, you can find. Uh, I guess so. Uh, yeah, here on screen, lbry.tv forward slash at Vonnie podcast and float.at forward slash Rayo. And uh, yeah, bit shoot, just uh, search for Liberty Energy Attack. You find us over there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have much else. I, um, I don't even know what's what's next for for the podcast. I don't know. This this, this was kind of a, a random, ep- random episode too, right? So um, we'll see. <laughs> this, was, this was literally thrown together like, what, three hours ago? Hey Jason, you want to record? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I've I've got to this weekend. I've got to format a uh, I've got to format a book. I'm not gonna say. I'm gonna wait till we pub till we publish. But it's it's a uh, it's it's a really 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 cool project. Some some big names um are on the table of contents, um and it's nice. just a really really cool really cool project. Um, got, yeah, I yeah. heard um. Um, I heard an LUA commercial on uh, Monica Perez. Yep, yep. For uh, for uh, um, what the hell's the name of that book now? Brushfire. Brushfire, yeah, mm-hmm. Brushfire on Monica Perez. Yep. I was like, oh, big timing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've actually pulled back on the advertising some, but I I need to get back. Well, actually, I I don't know. See, like it's. I, like I, I, it, it's really hard to actually attribute like positive, like to to see if, ad, if advertising actually does anything because there, there like there are times and I'll like I'll advertise a ton and I don't see a sale for like fifteen days and then there's times where I won't advertise for like two months and I'll just get consistent sales every single day like on Amazon or something. It's like mm-hmm. I, like I, I don't know like so I, I found just don't advertise at all or just like do it spontaneously whenever I want to through the podcast and such and it's working out okay. So, f it. <laughs> Work around the farm. Yeah, that's... leave. <laughs> yeah, leave Word the marketing to the algorithm. Word of mouth works. Yeah, and there and, you go. and it's yeah, you doing a lot of that. You are still doing God's work out there with the seditious version and sabotage means. That's still having a lot of good residual effect. I know that is. Yeah, I, I have I have had a few people reach out about that one, and then uh, um, I had a few people reach out about Vanu. I uh, um, somebody posted on on Facebook the other day about uh um oh any authors you know plug your book and and i i shared i shared yours i shared your copy of your uh edition of vanu oh, nice. and I, I had someone reach in, reach out about that and introduce them to the podcast and whatnot so you oh. know it's word of mouth people are people are looking into this man that's i mean people are yeah it's it some was, people. It was cool it, I, was, it was... I don't say people i'll say some people mm-hmm yeah, it was cool. Last night, yeah. uh, I got, or was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, not last night, but yesterday, I got in a uh, Twitter thread with uh, Sherry Voluntary. She was, she plugged Vanu to somebody, and she's mm-hmm. been, she's been checking it out, and uh, she mentioned doing a live stream about it sometimes. So yeah, people are, people are checking it out and and digging it. So that's, it's yeah, really, really cool, um, really, really cool. And I will uh, go ahead and mention just uh, for those uh, out there. LibertyInteract.com forward slash Vani book. If you want to check out my book, Vani with Strategy for Self Liberation, uh, you can find it. Uh, the link to uh, obviously you can purchase it right there on the website, or you can purchase it on Amazon if you uh, if you want to do that. I understand if you want to, you know, if they've got your your PI, if they've got your personal identifiable information and you don't want to give it to somebody else, I totally understand that. That's that's like the that's the that's why I put it there. I totally understand that part. Um, but if you want to support us, you can you can purchase through the book through the site, or you can just go to archive.org and download it for free. Um, so yeah, all, everything we sell is available for free, um, on libertyintact.com or vaniapodcast.com. If there's not a direct link to it, you might have to do just like one step and just search for it. I know a lot of people don't like to do one step, um, and Uh they have just like a link. And I try to do that a lot of times, but there's other times where like, I don't know, like it's, it's very easy to find things. Like if you, it's, it's very easy to find things, especially if you just go to the search bar on the site. So, um, (laughs) not to be a jerk. But uh, yeah, all all of the books we we put out there are available for free too. So, 
Um, with that said, uh, Jason, anything else before I, I close her out? I've been talking for, for about 50 minutes. I think that's a decent decent length episode, especially since we really didn't come into this with much other than, I guess, just the, the idea I had for a, a cool end-of-the-year newsletter that morphed into this too. So, yeah, anything else? <laughs> um, not really. Check out Road to Autonomy magazine. Um, yes, for sure. Dharma's putting out a good product, and then um, a lot of people are contributing to that, and – um, a lot of good information in there. Yes, for sure, for sure. And I will uh, pull that up on screen before we close out here. Um, but yeah, rtamagazine.com. Uh, um, for that, we've got a, uh, a Bonnie portion in there, and there's a lot of really, really, uh, a lot of really good stuff there. So, um, mm -hmm. yep, definitely check that out. RTA, RTA Magazine. Um, dot com. I'm trying to think up. I thought there was one other thing I was going to mention since you brought that up. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I guess we'll, we'll leave it there. Leave it there. But uh, Jason, thanks for for taking some time to chat, man. It was it was good. I'm glad we uh, we got to connect and 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 really, I I just I, I just wanted to connect and yeah, make that connection again because I it, yeah, I feel like we'll, we'll record. We're more likely to record again if we just do it once. Um, and kind of same with Kyle. Like we're we're <laughs> we're talking on uh, on Telegram. And uh, I think we're we're almost. It, it's been like probably two years since Kyle and I have recorded a podcast. So um, I think we're almost yeah. there to where we, we might have like a reunion episode. Um, so that'd be a, be a be a pretty pretty neat deal. And uh, and hopefully I invite him out to. Uh, I told him, hey, get out of, get out of Austin, man. Get out of, get out of Austin and uh, come out to uh, come out to Pasnia for a weekend or something. So he might do that. Um, I guess yeah. Oh. Um, was I was I was gonna mention something about Pasnia. Um there was a the, yeah, final thing, there's an update about Pasnia um that I added today. For those who um made any donation, there was twenty some people, um or probably thirty some people, rather, I think digitally too. But uh <clears throat> yeah, I will uh, begin mailing out um the stakeholder packages. Um, January 1st, I uh, just got the uh, a new order of flags in and uh, was kind of holding out hope on the custom silver coins. But unfortunately, with uh, the way things are right now, the, uh, there were a few places I looked that just they weren't even doing their custom minting service because the, they just didn't have any silver to begin with uh, to to to, uh, to mint. Um, they just were selling so much that they, they weren't even doing their, their, their service. There were, there were a few of those. And uh, there was one person I was hoping to uh, to reach out to in the in the Agora, but uh, um, yeah, they, they didn't make the connection, unfortunately. So um, I will come up with something else. It might not be a, uh, I guess, a, a silver, a, a custom Pasnia silver coin, but we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something of, of, uh, of equal value um, to, uh, to replace that. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's it. If you want to, to check out what we're doing here at the Free Republic of Pasnia, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, a neat way, uh, to, to do an intentional community kind of, uh, to, to, to get things, uh, to, to get things set up and, uh, also to give people, um, I guess to, to give people an opportunity to get on, get in on the ground floor of something like this. Uh, I want to give people that opportunity, um, that won't, maybe don't have access to, to land or something like that. And, uh, it's, it's with folks like with, with Vani Fest. Um, this past yeah, with with this past September, it was folks I've gone to like five years of freedom festivals with. So like I I, I it was kind of I, I I was trying to like I wasn't sure like I, I learned about vetting and such from Kyle, but like it kind of naturally happened just like over five the span of five years. Like you you get to know people pretty well. Um, so like it was it's such it's such a really incredible first layer of trust for a first you know first layer in the circle of trust. So. Um, I don't know. Maybe a, a definitely some maybe a model to, to model to look into that just kind of naturally happened. So um, yeah, I guess I'm just I'm, I guess I'm just rambling now. But anything else, man? Before I before I before I finally hit stop. <laughs> no, okay. nothing else. Very good. No, I'm good. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Vonniepodcast.com, LibertyInteract.com. Uh, until next time, always remember, Vonnie was yours for the making, and another really. Another one of my favorite Vani quotes that need to need to say more. Vani fosters other Vani. So take that first step and it will it will coalesce, it will snowball into into something you won't even ever imagine. But all it takes is that uh, that first step, get that ball rolling. Get that ball of self liberation rolling down that hill. And uh really stupid analogy, but see you guys. <laughs>
Well, instead of making this an internal exercise only, I figured I'd prepare it in the form of a newsletter for my email list. Audio for the podcast feed, volnupodcast.com forward slash 103, video for LBRY, uh, BitChute, uh, etc. Around this time in 2018, I was returning, returning back to the USSA after nearly a two-month adventure in Acapulco with fellow Vanuan Jason Henza. Uh, the night before I left for the airport, I recorded a video summarizing that journey and the difficulty in wrestling with the fact that I would soon be back in the USSA, but still positively looking forward. After all, I had some wilderness camping to do at Tejas Camp, an appropriately named Liberty Hill, Texas. And hey, even if I wasn't sitting pretty financially, I was returning to some form of a liberated lifestyle. I was making plans for a trip out west to the Rockies of Colorado in hopes of snagging a seasonal job at a ski resort. I did end up getting one, but little did I know, I would wind up back in southern Illinois. This location is now the Free Republic of Pasnia. There were no plans to homestead. There were really no plans for much of anything, other than starting my not-real-day job uh, at the uh, distillery. That summer, 2018, I tried and failed with my first batch of chickens and got my first experience of animal husbandry. The following summer, my second bird operation failed to take flight too, thanks to some predator. Still, though, I wasn't seriously considering any plans of homesteading. My focus was still fixed on van nomadism. Then I had a change in my way of eating, which came with it good health for the first time I could remember. And I must say, after buying organic, grass-fed meat and dairy for a few months, I realized paying retail price wasn't really sustainable when consuming multiple pounds of animal products daily. Combined that with the looming uncertainty circa February-March 2020, and the decision to homestead had already made itself. You could say that the neuronal connection had already been made in my subconscious mind. Vanu fosters at their Vanu. And as our posthumous mentor, Rayo, so eloquently described back in the 1960s, Vanu fosters other Vanu. In March, April of this year, I got my first set of goats and first couple of lambs, and self-liberators started visiting the homestead more often. Again, without much conscious intervention, this theoretical idea I'd been trying to verbalize and really try to get straight in my head for the past couple of years was beginning to merge with reality. Just as a 3D printer would sequentially and fluidly lay down each line of plastic filament, the next step in this overarching strategy of liberation came into the fore. Vanufest 1, and the birth of Pasnia. On another cross-country trip in May 2020, had to stop by the homestead. We got the original private group chat set up, and the plans for Vanufest 1 were in motion. On the last weekend of September, we would gather for a weekend of liberation and the birth of Pasnia, a special ceremony involving a speech, a constitution signing, and other theatrics. Concomitantly, uncertainty was still growing in the Servile Society, as those who falsely imagined themselves to be our rulers continued their locking down of those who would comply. Side narratives began evolving, such as shortages of food, economic collapse fears, the hastily advancing technocracy, and really just a realization by many people that their dependence upon these systems is extremely dangerous and misplaced. While not preferable, fear is certainly a great motivator for action, which is exactly what we've been seeing. Great strides toward food self-sufficiency, more progress networking locally like freedom cells, and an even greater more general push in the direction of building parallel societies based upon autonomy and freedom. The vision for Pasnia came together, and on September 26th, we convened to officially found this free republic. The foundation was laid for the coming intentional community. On this note, I must extend a huge thank you to everyone who came out to Vanufest 1, and especially those who joined me in this vision by becoming founding and honorary stakeholders. Come fall 2021, I'm confident that food self-sufficiency will largely be achieved, and I can't wait to share that abundance. There's plenty of lamb testicle to go around. Mmm, land scallops. The liberating weekend at Veritas Pasnia. Fast forward to Thanksgiving weekend, wherein we had a little get-together here at Pasnia, despite the arbitrary dictates leveled by the pre-diabetic J.B. Prickster. We processed a couple of lambs, threw some meat in the freezer for a rainy day, and really just had an incredible liberating weekend. Go to the Vani Podcast LBRY channel to view the highlight video, or read the full report from a self-liberator at agorasnexus.com. The Homestead in Pasnia, what's to come in 2021. Like I mentioned above, 2021 is the year of food self-sufficiency here at Pasnia. I had originally planned to use the other field for a couple yaks, bison, or pastured pigs, but with how damn easy lambs are from start to finish, I'm leaning more towards these beautiful animals. And with three pregnant female lambs, six new babies come spring is certainly possible. In a few weeks, I will obtain some fertilized chicken and duck eggs to incubate and prepare to move them out to the front yard when the weather improves. Thanks to these incredible fertilizers, along with incredible insight from other permaculture farmers, 
This will provide the foundation for the food jungle that will emerge in the coming months and years. In addition to food, I also intend on planting certain plant medicines that have been used in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine for thousands of years. The only other pressing items remaining for the first two quarters of 2021 are to patch the small pond on the property for fish and possibly off-grid water. One other thing, with most festivals and events canceled for the coming year and the prospects of so-called immunity passports or similar iterations as a condition of entry, we're considering private, security-culture-minded music festivals here at the Self Liberators Paradise. As a facilitator of a second realm, I feel I have an obligation to provide a space for a flourishing underground culture. And plus, there is and will be an ever greater demand for human interaction, and to put it simply, fun. Why shouldn't liberation be fun? Building the Second Realm Network, what's to come in 2021. In brief, building out this overarching Second Realm Freedom Cell Underground Network. Offer up your abode to fellow vetted, traveling, or in need self liberators. Network with others locally to arrange alternative solutions to infrastructure, mesh networks, greenhouses, solar panels, Tesla style breakthrough energy, food, etc. And even more simply and more importantly, find your tribe so that we can begin to live the way that we want, in accordance with our principles, so that we can exclude those that are unable and unwilling to leave peaceful people alone and so that we can live in accordance with nature, collaborating to once again bring the Garden of Eden back to its original location here on Earth. In conclusion, while exercising security culture principles is still crucially important, i.e. using a pseudonym, utilizing proxy merchants, and practicing the gray man when interacting with the servile society, to name a few, even at this time, the number of second realms makes them truly the haunting enemy of the technocrats and coercers. It's as Smuggler and XYZ said in their guide, Second Realm Book on Strategy, quote, we are tribes of mind and soul, not defined by nation or race, but by thought and substance. We are everywhere, and we are here to stay. End quote. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks so much to all the readers of VanuPodcast.com. Thanks to the listeners of the Vanu Podcast, and thanks to those watching on Library, BitChute, or wherever. And uh, to anyone out there planting the seeds of self-liberation, thank you as well. It's been uh, an incredible 2020, despite the insanity, and uh, here's to an even better, freer 2021. Bonnie was yours for the making. A brief excerpt from the preface of Dr. Henry Jones's The Invention of Evil, the newest book available from Liberty Under Attack Publications. I set out in life to find out what was harming psychiatric patients. When I entered the psychiatric profession, I was immediately confronted with the reality of insane asylums, involuntary psychiatric hospitalization, electroshock therapy, and powerful and dangerous drugs. Force and coercion engulfed everything in my profession. Before I could begin to study my psychiatric patients, I was confronted with my own beliefs and how they conflicted with the assumptions of my chosen profession. I have based this book on what my patients taught me. I learned that they suffered from a mental injury intentionally inflicted on them when they were children. The purpose of this abuse and betrayal was to swindle them out of their most precious property. The property that is stolen by this widely prevalent scheme is the most valuable property a person can ever own. It is their self. Although millions, possibly billions of people have been victims of this kind of theft, a person's self is not easy to steal. To accomplish such a theft requires a special tool. This tool had to be invented. This tool is evil. I realized that in order to help my patients reclaim their property, I would have to know a lot more about evil and how to successfully combat it. This book is about the insight I gained into how evil wins, enslaves the self, and how this process can be defeated. This book, this hypothesis, is published to fulfill a 70-year-old promise. Dr. Henry Jones's book, Psychological Evolution and the Intention of Evil, a Scientific Exposition, has been edited by Timothy Wingate, THD, updated, referenced, and is now the invention of evil. Evil is not what you have been told it is. Evil wears a face of normalcy. Evil hides in plain sight. Evil has wounded you. Evil has tricked you into wounding others. Evil can be overcome with truth and the courage to act. A no-holds-barred examination of what evil is and where it came from, how to recognize it and how to stop it, and how to heal your mind from evil's effects. 
Get it today at libertyunderattack.com forward slash invention of evil. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash invention of evil. The link to purchase on Amazon is there as well. When is enough enough? The government taxes, licenses, and restricts almost everything we do, and then they have the balls to act like we are unable to handle freedom. In revoked consent, we see what happens when technology, anger, and desire for freedom come in contact with government. Alternate currencies, the Vanu lifestyle, and a strong security culture, these all make regular people targets. Are you ready to revoke consent? Find out how freedom can triumph over totalitarianism in this libertarian and Vanu themed piece of fiction, Revoked Consent, authored by TVP listener Ian Minnelli. To pick up your copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash revoked consent. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash revoked consent. And make sure to check out the rest of the books, audiobooks, and privacy products available from Liberty Under Attack Publications. Libertyunderattack.com. Share your story, find your freedom. Thank you.